This time, I'm making a barbecue chicken pizza, which I find easily rivals the big delivery brand version. But before you go, people who don't like barbecue chicken, stick around for the dough recipe and cooking method. Honestly, you can put anything on this pizza your heart desires. Swap out these toppings for tomato passata with salt and oregano, for example, and you've got a margarita. Okay, equipment. I use a pizza steel for my pizzas, so it's vital that I have a pizza peel, a flat metal tray on a handle to carefully put the pizza onto the hot steel. Another non-essential I use is a dough paddle, which makes it easier to lift sticky dough from my work surface. Again, you can get away without one, but it will make this process easier. You will need a frying pan, a mixing bowl, scales of some kind, and a tea towel. To make this dough, I'm using 250 grams of double zero flour. Typically for making pasta, ground more finely, which results in a smoother dough. If you only have white bread flour, make sure it's very strong and high in gluten to make the dough nice and elastic. Next comes one teaspoon of caster sugar that I put in a ramekin, one generous teaspoon, or three and a half grams to be exact, of dried, fast-action bread yeast goes in before 163 milliliters of tepid water. The mixture takes around five minutes for the yeast to bloom or wake up and start eating those sugars. I wipe down my kneading surface, both for hygiene and to avoid any dirt from being kneaded into the dough. One teaspoon of fine salt is stirred into the flour before tipping it into the centre of my work surface and forming a well in its centre. One tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil is added to the yeast mix and gently stirred in before being added to the flour well. The flour is gradually incorporated into the liquid until a sticky dough begins to form, at which point you can get your dough paddle involved or get stuck in with your hands. Minus any rings or jewellery, of course, being careful not to waste any of the flour. I find that gently rolling and pressing the dough helps to expose the sticky areas to the drier areas and achieve uniformity. Knead by hand for three minutes or so, stretching it out to see its inner texture. The dough should be elastic but not too wet. Form the dough into a smooth ball and give it a spank. The freshly spanked dough goes into a lightly floured bowl and is covered with a thoroughly dampened tea towel to stop its surface from drying out. The bowl goes somewhere at room temperature for a couple of hours until it's ready to use. Okay, that's the dough rising, now let's sort out our toppings. I use half a red onion and half of any bell pepper I have going in the fridge. Chop off the pepper's stalk and its veins for tidiness and chop lengthways into strips. Drizzle over a little olive oil and toss in some sea salt. There's no reason your veg should be bland. Next, cut the red onion in half, lop off its top and bottom, and peel the outer skin to expose the firmer layers. Chop lengthways into strips of similar length to the pepper, and mix them into the oil and salt too. Grab a pre-cooked chicken breast. I cooked this in the oven at 200 degrees Celsius for about 23 minutes, and left it to cool to room temperature. At room temperature, it's much easier to slice than if it were straight from the fridge, where the meat would have shrunk and become a bit too firm. Cut those into chunks or slices, again around the same thickness as the other toppings. Onto bacon. I use pancetta cut smoked bacon that crisps up incredibly well. Fry on high until you begin to see colour, and turn down to low to finish. Allow the bacon to cool on some kitchen paper before chopping roughly into big old bits. Very important, we have our cheese. I prefer this pre-grated dried mozzarella that has been lightly coated in potato starch, an anti-caking agent to stop it from, well, caking together. The cheese's lack of moisture, in addition to the additional dryness from the starch, helps the cheese to cook evenly and create those little brown spots. This product's throwaway, perfect on pizza slogan, I actually agree with. Finally, the key ingredient to a barbecue flavoured pizza is the barbecue sauce. I've determined that this brand and variant tastes most like the sauce we enjoy from takeaway pizza places. Around 30 to 45 minutes ahead of cooking the pizza, my baking steel goes into the oven at its hottest temperature. I get amazing results from cooking on my baking steel. I may get an outdoor oven eventually, but honestly this does a good enough job when compared to a thin baking sheet. We'll take a closer look at the results of the pizza dough when it's cooked. As you can see, the dough has grown considerably in size since it was left on its shelf. A liberal amount of ground semolina, not semolina flour, which is much too fine, goes onto my clean work surface before I tease the dough out of its bowl. The dough goes straight into the centre of the semolina before I press down, push outwards and rotate repeatedly until the dough reaches the size and thickness I need, taking into consideration not only the size of my pizza steel, but of my pizza peel. More semolina goes on the peel before transferring the stretched dough onto it. Brilliant. Now the dough is ready for its toppings. On goes a heavy amount of barbecue sauce that I push almost to the edges with the back of a spoon. Next comes the chicken, which I don't want to dry out, followed by the cheese, sliced pepper and onion, and finally the bacon. With a gentle thrust, let the pizza slide off the peel and onto the preheated steel in the oven. Leave it for eight minutes without opening the oven door. It's pizza time! 
As I promised, here's a look at the base of the pizza. Look how effectively and evenly the base is crisped up, especially with the semolina. We don't have the leopard spots you'd get from a wood-fired oven, but there is good colour. Now this pizza won't win any beauty contests, but damn, it is delicious. Before we go, let's make a quick garlic mayo. This is so simple, I prefer it to the delivery brand version every time. Finally grate a clove of garlic and add to a non-stick frying pan with a little olive oil. Fry the garlic on very high heat for 30 seconds or so, jostling with a fork until it just goes from pale to golden. Immediately remove the garlic and add it to a bowl with a few squirts of mayo. Now there's a pizza experience.